Hello and welcome to another episode of the Deceptive Reality Podcast. My name is Nick and with me is the terrific Bert. I'm just fooling. I wasn't actually talking right there. Oh, you got me. I was like, oh, this is not good. This is not good. For anyone that doesn't understand that joke, we got a small delay that we're trying to deal with. So it's kind of... I was, I was messing with Nick. We figured that out uh, spur of the moment, which is always exciting. Oh, Leave yeah, my co-host in chalk. me earlier. <laughs> no, I wish I was. So for anyone that's out there, if you notice that uh, we slightly talk over each other, it's because there's a slight delay, which is a little confusing. Uh, so <laughs> well, we're not rude people. We're really not. We're, <laughs> we're really not. We try not to be anyway. Oh, yeah. man. Today... Today's been kind of a crazy one, Nick. We're trying to survive out here. We got all kinds of things going on. We're starting this thing late. We was going to do two oh, podcasts yeah. today. Now we're only doing one. Man. Uh, we're going to be at it with a vengeance on Monday. I can feel it in my blood. I feel it. We're recording this on a Thursday. Thursday, July 25th, for anyone that doesn't right. know. I, I don't know why you tell them that, because then it sort of, we have to be careful about our timelines. No, we don't. Because now when they go back and they go, they recorded this on July 25th. We didn't get this till like a month later. That's why, folks, we record a little ahead of schedule. Yeah, yeah but they, they wouldn't even know. That's half the fun. Because, listen, if we tell <laughs> something from the future now, right. we can go back and say, hey, we recorded this on the 25th. And they'd be like, that's what they said. We should mess it up and just like say this is uh, August 15th, 2027. That we oh, recorded that be, this. That would have been smart. I wish I'd have thought of that ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this, this, is, this is some like time travel stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Well, oh, as man. everyone probably does not know, this week is my week. That's kind of exciting. Mm-hmm. I knew that. Nick did know that. <laughs> he did know that. Uh, so today is going to be uh, one of my stories. But we're going to do a, what I'm going to call a retraced echo kind of narrative on one and oh. by that what I mean maybe something I enjoy over there and I've got a deceptive reality one. Oh no I'm a liar I'm a liar I got three ready Nick oh wow one, two. I do got three ready <laughs> I forgot to put one on there last week <laughs> Okay. Wow. Well, listen, there's this a lot on the go here. I've got a retraced echo one. Uh, so, by mm-hmm. that, what I mean is it's made for deceptive reality, clearly, but it's typically what I would have on my podcast. And then I've got two oh, that is deceptive reality ish. Mm-hmm. Well, this this is like a crossover episode, like Simpsons meets Family Guy or, well, you know, Jetsons maybe and Flintstones. Maybe, Nick. It depends on if we go do the one that's retraced echoes. This is where it becomes fun because we're going to have a first ever mm-hmm. deceptive reality where I have no clue what our story is tonight. Oh, you're just spinning it. It's going to be one of those three. You are. Oh, I am. Because I have them labeled A, B, and C. And you don't know what they are. Uh, not at this point. I know the one, uh, I'm not going to tell you what the letter is, but I know the one that's in there first because <laughs> that's the one I put in there for last right. week that I forgot. So, uh, so you you want me to choose A, B, or C, is that right? That is correct. You have A, B, or C. All right. I'm going to choose B for bad mother hunter. <laughs> I can't even wait to see what this one is, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is exciting. We should do this, this all the time. This is super exciting. This is what happens when you got multiple ones on there. <laughs> <laughs> all it's right. Like Russian roulette, but for podcasts. It kind of is. Uh, so. I hope everyone enjoys this. (laughs) In the twilight of June 1982, Cindy Hack, at the age of 38, finally severed ties with her husband, Roy. She moved to a new home in Vancouver, Canada, where a sense of liberation washed over her, like a soothing balm after years of a marriage turned sour and abusive. 
The peace she craved was shattered on the night of October 7, 1982. The phone rang late into the evening, its shrill sound piercing the quiet of her new sanctuary. Cindy Hello? answered, only to be greeted by a voice that was raspy and venomous. It called her by name and spat out a chilling promise of harm before abruptly hanging up. Paralyzed with fear, Cindy chose to do nothing, hoping it was an isolated incident. But the calls continued, each one more menacing than the last. The caller always addressed her by name, their threats of violence escalating. Cindy tried to convince herself it was a cruel prank, a twisted game played by someone with a sick sense of humor. She carried on, refusing to let fear dictate her life. One evening, an unsettling feeling gnawed at her as she moved through her home. She glanced toward the living room and noticed one of the windows was still open, a silent sentinel to the outside world. Drawing the curtains was her nightly ritual, a small act of fortification against the unknown. She approached the window, pressing her face against the cold glass, scanning the darkness outside. Seeing nothing, she closed the curtains and turned to leave. The phone rang again. This time she hesitated before picking up the receiver. The mocking voice on the other end sent a shiver down her spine. It taunted her, telling her that curtains wouldn't protect her, that they knew when she was home. The realization struck her like a thunderclap. This was no prank. This was real. Desperation drove her to contact the police. Officers arrived, combing through her home and property. They found no signs of forced entry or any crime committed. After a thorough inspection, they reassured her of her safety, suggesting she consider getting an unlisted telephone number as a precaution. But Cindy's ordeal was far from over. The specter of fear loomed large, casting long shadows over her once safe haven, and she couldn't shake the feeling that someone, or something, was always watching. Well, that's a spooky start. <laughs> you said... I believe it was last time we did a podcast, Nick. You had stated mm -hmm. that your favorite ones to do and the ones you get the most excited about is space mm -hmm. ones. They are. So I said to you, the next five that I've got, none of them are space. Mm -hmm. And then I created oh. one and put it on the drive and then forgot I put it there. And then I did two more. <laughs> and I did right. remember those ones. Still no space? No space. Uh, None of them are space related. I don't know why you'd even bring that up. Because my <laughs> goal was, if you remember, I said, mm -hmm. I plan on changing your opinion of which ones are the most fun. Oh, yes, that's right. That is true. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed it was a different voice reading this one off as well. It is. I've tried that on sounded, this one. Uh, sounded younger. A little younger, mm -hmm. a little younger, but very, very good at speaking stories. Okay. Spooky yeah, stories. I thought so too. Yeah, I thought I thought it was very good at that. Mm -hmm. um, the other thought I had on this first part because I still don't know where we're at. Mm -hmm. That's, like, the, there's that's the best part. In this lady, they're yeah. harassing her, and one of your neighbors. Right. I know. Well, kinda. What do you kinda, mean, kind of? Like the same way someone, the same way as someone in California would be your neighbor, I guess. Yeah. And when they pass by, I go, hey, neighbor, like that. <laughs> I, actually, not to get off topic, but I hear in the US that people travel through states all the time and it's not a big deal. Yeah. We do it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, we, we feel like it's a bigger deal to travel through provinces for some reason. That's because each one of your provinces is like the size of a small country, Nick. Uh, I suppose that's true. And there's a lot yeah. of them that, uh, and people are going to hate me for saying this, there's a lot of them got nothing in them. <laughs> well, I will say there is a lot mm -hmm. of wilderness in some of the ones I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. We, we got, uh, okay, this is a distorted view of this, but we've got the left side, which is like, BC and Vancouver and like mm -hmm. the one what you're talking about and there's yep. tons of cool stuff over there it's really beautiful mm -hmm. we got the Maritimes on the right side which is where I am yeah really cool 
beautiful stuff. Got a bunch of stuff here. Um, I know where this got, is going. Like, Toronto and Ontario. Really cool. I love Toronto. I was just really there cool. a little while ago. Gotta love them. And then all the middle. Nothing. I knew that's a big nothing sandwich. I thought that's what she was going to say. All the good stuff's on the outside. <laughs> that's what and I'm nothing saying. in the middle. That, that's exactly. what I'm saying. Man, that's tough. Yeah. Yeah, tough. I'm sorry, everyone. If there's people there, if there's people there, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> they probably are not, because um, we just discussed this. There's nothing in the middle, Nick. <laughs> Duh. That's right. Uh, I but the the <laughs> sorry. The other comment I had on this particular one is I don't know if it was this way in the states, but in Canada, we used to have to pay to be unlisted. Doesn't that seem wild today? Yeah, I want to say we also had to pay to be unlisted, I believe. If I remember correctly, yeah, when, that's when they a did weird that. business proposition because it's like it's like you pay us to not do something to you. Exactly. Well, that's why I think it was in our podcast is that is maybe it's just my podcast. I can't remember. We talked uh, when we was talking to Joe and he talked about how Ed and Lorraine Warren's number was in the phone book. And I'm like, what a weird thought yeah, today. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what a weird thought for us in right. 2024. I'm sorry, 2027. <laughs> it, 2027. That's right. August in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I wonder who else's uh, number was in there. Could you find like every celebrity in the phone book and all this stuff? I mean, Ed and Lorraine Warren was huge. When Joe was talking about that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, they was on television shows at that point. Right. So, I mean, I would assume if you like, was... Could you call you know, Tom Cruise, Mel Gibson? Of course. Of course. Be like, baby Tom Cruise. Wow. Where you at, baby Tom Cruise? <laughs> what, <laughs> what, a, what a time to <laughs> what a time to be. The world was so trusting. That's why. Yeah. Not nowadays, by golly. Thank goodness. No. I, no. Shoot. When my phone rings, I just look at it like, what the heck is this thing who's, doing? Who's doing this thing to me? Like, I was just watching YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's crazy. Speaking of which, y'all have to let us know what you thought of the Joe episode. Oh, yeah. I'm really curious. I'm super curious. Uh, That should be, there's two Joe episodes and then your, what, what was it you did last week? What was your episode, Nick? Oh, it was the, uh, how we got our technology after. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it was. I forgot. Listen, my memory is not what it used to be, Nick. Uh, And then there's this one. So. Uh, but I'm super curious because uh, I'm sure I did. In fact, I know I didn't say anything in the technology was. <laughs> but what did y'all think? It'll be interesting. Um, mm. Now on to the today's story, because you don't know what it is yet, Nick. That's half the excitement. Uh, and can I just say I'm a little disappointed you didn't pick C? Uh, but it's I, fine. I it's thought fine. about it because I had a rhyming title for that, too. Yeah. Yeah, but I I didn't pick it. I was like, "Mm, now I'll go with B so I can say bad mother huncha. (laughs) (laughs) Well, this one is a pretty awesome one. Mm -hmm. Uh, This one has a really cool story behind it. Mm -hmm. Uh, C is one that I know you loved one of our previous episodes and it's basically the same thing, kind of. Oh, okay. And the other one is uh, spiritual. <laughs> spiritual. Spiritual one, man. You know what? I might do this next week, too. I might build yeah. like another one or two and then give you the option of A, B, C, or D and then just change all the letters on them. I, I love being confused and surprised, <laughs> so I would love that myself. Yeah, that'll be fun. I might do that. Uh, can I ask for a spoiler on this one? Is this one supernatural? No. Okay. Well. Maybe. I mean, I don't really, I don't think so. Do you remember when we did the Watcher one? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that one was like pretty much not supernatural, but then there was kind of some things at the end, which is like, you know, something weird could be happening. Yes. Let's, let's put it this way. Vibe from you. 
And that, that's a good vibe to have, Nick. Yeah. Let's put it this way. If the Circleville letters mm-hmm. and the Watcher had a baby, this might be the baby. Oh, well, I'm super excited now. I got to say that you've set a feeling in that first mm-hmm. part that I really like. Yeah. What's well, What was that? Uh, it's just in my in my head. Like I I make these scenarios where I can see everything like a movie mm-hmm. that she's in this house. It's rural but it's not you know super isolated and she's living there and she's getting these calls night after night and it's that old ringing of the phone that's made by a actual bell going around yes and she don't know where this person might be watching her from she don't know if it's if the person's been in her house or not maybe and she's just realized that she's got to be careful now she can't live the lifestyle she's been living well Here's what I did on this. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going to pull the curtains for everyone just oh a little boy. bit. When I did the narration this week, I went technically for the next three that I do. Mm-hmm. I had AI write it in the style of a Twilight Zone episode. Oh, interesting. I asked it if Twilight Zone was to create this episode. That's why it's going to sound way smarter than our typical ones that I do, <laughs> because those are Burt words. Okay. <laughs> These yeah. are not Burt words. But I said, rewrite. So I wrote the entire thing mm-hmm. and then I cut it into sections. In each section, I said, write this how Rod Sterling would tell this story if he was on the Twilight Zone. And that's what we're getting. Yeah, it's 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 like that. I felt that. Mm-hmm. I wish I could say I did that. The AI took my story and made it better but i did double check to make sure it was correct because sometimes ai likes to add little things uh and one of the stories not this one but one of the stories i did it added like three things i'm like you can't do that i didn't tell you to do that i've seen it do that (laughs) yeah i'm like yeah you can't be adding that that's fictional listen we're reputable podcasts around here okay (laughs) it's becoming just (laughs) like a person it lies (laughs) it is exactly that's what i'm saying so yeah with this one we got a lady in Canada. That's scary in and of itself. Because listen, Canada's got some wild animals out there. Uh, Y'all yeah, got mooses. Mm-hmm. Okay. They like eagles. Fight. Yeah, you got eagles. Yeah. You got yeah, a got couple. Some. Couple. We okay. got a few. We got a few. Uh, you all got owls, right? Uh, you know, owls are where everything bad happens. So exactly, Canada uh, land. Geese, also known as the geese. cobra chicken. Exactly. <laughs> The old Cobra, Cobra, Cobra clinch. <laughs> <laughs> right. They make that hissing noise and yeah. they go at you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, one of them punched me in the groin one time. It hurt like hell. <laughs> no wonder. No yeah. wonder you got a fear for him, Nick. I would too. Oh, yeah. I got real sick. <laughs> it wasn't good. Oh, man. Now, the beautiful part of this is she's at home. Now, you got to mm-hmm. understand, in the beginning of the narration, it said she was married. She just got a right. divorce. So she's kind of you know, filling life out on her own. She doesn't got a man with her no mm-hmm. more. She's like, I can do this. Yeah, she okay? don't need no man. Don't need no man. Okay. In 1980, I think it's one or seven, 80 something. Yeah. Anyway, she's like, I don't need no man in the 80s. Listen, I buy my own stuff. Right. In the she 80s, was just, you could buy stuff. Yeah, she's like, I can buy myself flowers. <laughs> okay. But, uh, so she's there, and now all of a sudden, she's like, man, kind of wish I had a man now, because there's some creep calling me, kind of freaky. Uh, <laughs> and then I left it at that point. I just I wanted to sprinkle yeah. it. Now, I will say these narrations are also a little bit longer than we typically have. Right. And the reason for that is I didn't... Typically, I like to split it each thing. Mm-hmm. But when it's narration like this, and it's Twilight Zone, you can't split it like that. Yeah. I, I appreciate it, because I get a little sippy sip of my water. Yeah, exactly. You got some time. Yeah, that's right. Are you ready to to, to figure out what happens now, Nick? Since uh, we kind of we put a little sprinkling, of sh- uh, just a little bit of sugar on there. Now we're going to dump it down. I, I am, but I want to say, too, she probably didn't mm-hmm. say, oh, I wish I had a man because it's probably a man calling her. It could be. Yeah, it probably is. You're probably, <laughs> She's probably right. probably just like, damn, men, get man, away. This is why I got divorced. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but, but let's find out more. Yeah, let's see. Three days later, on the evening of October 15th, Cindy Hack and her close friend Agnes returned from a pleasant dinner, only to find an ominous scene awaiting them at Cindy's house. As they approached, they noticed a broken front window. 
Their unease grew when they discovered the front door was unlocked and slightly ajar. Instinct urged them to leave and call the police, but after a moment's hesitation and hearing nothing from within, they decided to investigate. The house was cloaked in darkness, an unsettling silence hanging in the air. Everything seemed undisturbed, eerily calm. But as they ventured upstairs, their hearts pounded with a growing sense of dread. In the hallway, they found feathers scattered like sinister breadcrumbs leading to Cindy's bedroom. The sight that greeted them there was nightmarish. All of Cindy's pillows had been viciously torn apart, their innards strewn across the room. Amidst the chaos, a key to her front door lay conspicuously on her bedside table, a silent message from the intruder. The women fled the house, their terror palpable, and called the police. When the authorities arrived, they found themselves at a loss. Despite the clear signs of intrusion and Cindy's reports of threatening phone calls, there was no concrete evidence of a crime like kidnapping. The police could only offer limited advice. Change the locks, keep everything secured, and remain vigilant. If anything else seemed amiss, they should call back immediately. The mystery deepened, and the sense of foreboding wrapped tighter around Cindy's life, leaving her to wonder who had broken into her home and what they might do next. Where'd she hide that key? Where'd they get that key from? Well, we don't know that much, Nick. Hmm. Are we going to find that out, or is that just going to... I mean, no. We never figure out where the key comes uh, from. Uh, I uh, I think I let my imagination run wild with me on this. Uh, yeah? Yeah, when there was feathers, I thought there was some kind of be, like, horrible bird scene <laughs> coming up. <laughs> Oh, but don't I you worry. That pillows used to be feathers. Like my, none of my pillows are feathers. Uh, I used to have a feather pillow back in yeah. the day, and I hated it. Yeah, I had one too. I didn't like it so much either, because they mm -hmm. always wheedle their way out of there, and it's stick in your head when you're yeah. sleeping. You crunch up, and you're like, oh my god! You yeah. wake up, you're like, man, what's this on the side of my head? Why do I got a hole in my head for? I I got like I'm a rough and tough customer, but I gotta admit I gotta have like absolutely perfect sleeping conditions. Oh yeah, me too. Like I got like 15 pillows. I've got an <laughs> ND mattress, which I'm not being sponsored by, but I should be. You should um, be. You know, really high fancy bed. I uh, got the the what is it? Double queen or whatever. Like Ooh. I need perfect conditions. Perfection is what you need, Nick. You know, the best oh, yeah. thing that I think I've ever bought, and mm -hmm. uh, I got kind of a side story for this a little bit. Uh, w Jess and I bought these cooling pillows. Have you, oh. ever, have you ever had one of those? I don't know if it's the same kind. I've got two that say they are, but I have a feeling yours are going to be like technologically advanced. So the first one that we bought is not, it wasn't technologically advanced, mm -hmm. but I bet the coolness when you laid your head down was like 15, 20 minutes. Oh uh, yeah. And then when it would get warm, you just flip the pillow over and you got another 15, 20 minutes. That's fantastic. Fantastic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Cause I have to have a cold pillow. Yeah. I didn't know I needed one until I got one. I'm like, oh, I need this. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> it's like, a requirement. Before I got AC in my car, I was like, I don't need AC. I'll just wind the window down. Bunch of frail people needs ac <laughs> uh, that's what i used to think but i'm one of those frail people now i know right it's funny how that works yeah well jess changed our pillow out mm -hmm. this was uh because she came to me she's like i, I bought us all new pillows i was like uh oh you got us the cooling pillows right she said yeah i got you cooling pillows i'm like okay cool so she put them in that night i'm like all right well cool man this one this is a little bit bigger that's always good mm. i put my head down and like Two and a half minutes. I'm like, this ain't a cool pillow, you liar. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it was it was labeled a cooling pillow. Mm -hmm. It was not a cooling pillow. Uh, they lied. It was a lie. And your real good cooling pillow was gone? It was gone. Uh, I'd so, be so mad. I uh, mentioned the pillow a couple thousand times mm -hmm. every day after that for a while. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, lo and behold, uh, she bought me another pillow. <laughs> no, a cooling pillow, I would bet. A cooling one. Uh, but yeah, it was kind of a, kind of a thing. Whenever you have something that you just love, like a mm -hmm. cooling pillow, it's hard to get away from it. You're you like kind of like your AC. Yeah, you it's like back. your AC. You can't go. 
non-AC. Yeah, that's crazy talk. It's crazy talk. It's impossible to think of a world now without my cooling pillow. Right, exactly. And this poor lady, on top of being harassed, mm-hmm. has feather pillows, and the feathers are all over the place now. Now they're all gone. Yeah, that's terrible. Now, there's something that I want you to note. Right. And I waited till this section before I brought it up. I was going to see if you brought it up or not. Mm-hmm. So what the police do the first time? Nothing. What what advice did they give her? Get an unlisted number. That's, I mean, not bad advice, right? Maybe get an unlisted number. Well, I stand with my original statement. Mm-hmm. They did nothing. That's not advice. Yeah, that's not cop that's, work. Listen, that's not uh, <laughs> Dr. Phil advice, okay? That's more like the Rock, the, the Dwayne the Rock Johnson advice. Yeah, okay? it, that's like this joke that I heard, I go, I went to the doctor and I said, doctor, I broke my leg in two places. And the doctor's like, well, I'd stay away from those places. <laughs> you know? That's the same thing. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Now out of curiosity, mm-hmm. what happened? Did what, what happened the second time they came out? Did they even come out or did they just say well, they, they definitely told her something. Right. They, they did investigate. Uh, do you remember what they told her? I uh, changed the locks or something like that. Yeah, they sure did. That's it was the... like, you know, I'm noticing something about Canada real quick, Nick. Yeah. <sighs> Not a good look for the police currently where you're from. <sighs> Buddy, I could tell you something that's been going on the last month. Yeah. That would just curl your toes, but I don't oh, want to get in trouble but i'm gonna say there was a whole community up in arms because the cops weren't doing their job Uh uh-oh and it almost led to like uh mob justice so oh man so not much has changed since that story and now i guess yeah the 80s to now (laughs) 40 years it's like a blink of an eye in canada yeah no doubt that's crazy so yeah i'm not super impressed with the police work i doubt it will get better i mean I'm just pointing it out for now. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like there's a reason, but yeah. Sometimes yeah. I just point random things out, Nick. I just, you know, I get bored and I want to put pins on your board over there and we'll just see how many pins you get and stuff like that. It's exciting. That's right. Me. This, this guy is <laughs> escalating quick, though. Hey, this was three days later yeah. from the initial phone call. Yeah. This is like nothing. Harassing phone calls. Breaking in, tearing up the pillows, which is a which is yep. a weird escalation, if you ask me. Weird escalation. Yeah, it's, it's not it, a Rex, is it? it? Nick, we are two segments in. <laughs> that would be too easy. That'd, That'd be, be too easy. easy. I'm yeah. not going to give you an easy one, Nick. This is yeah. We do unsolved mysteries, Nick. That's what we do. This is yeah. unsolved. Yeah, that would. I mean, that wouldn't even be a mystery. That's like the first person I thought of. <laughs> I mean, it's a good first option, really. Well, I mean, that's what like effective cops would guess. I, I mean, they never said that. I don't recall them saying that. They did not. They just came up with changing your phone number and changing your locks. I mean, yeah. You know what? It almost makes me think it's them. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> well, Probably I want not. you to. Probably not. I want you to see uh, what happens. The reason I like this one so much is kind of like the Circleville yeah. letter started with phone calls and it right. kind of trickled. We're going to call it a trickle effect. Yeah. This one might do a little trickle effect, Nick. I hope there's a, a Rube Goldberg gun in a box in this one, but. <laughs> <laughs> If you haven't seen the Circleville letters, it's one of our best, I think. You need to go back. That one was a fun one. Yeah. That was one of the first episodes we got over 100 views in, and I was super excited. I know. That was a long time ago. Because that that story was wild. Like, I had a notebook, and I just had stuff written everywhere. (laughs) He did. I was a real conspiracy theorist guy there. Man, that was such a good story. And you know, it's still unsolved to this day. And we did that 10 months ago. We solved it. I mean, we solved it. We I'm solved saying the them. FBI didn't. I mean, other than us, <laughs> not a lot. Well, they're not as good as we are. So exactly, they should hire us. Yeah, they really should. Although I, 
had my dreams crushed when I was younger. I wanted to work for the FBI. Yeah, I can never work for the FBI. Why? Got to be born in America. I mean, that's probably great advice if we're if we're being a buck. <laughs> no offense, Nick. Listen. Yeah. But I, know. Uh, I was real disappointed, though. I wanted to work the X Files. I mean, you could have a Canadian. Listen, we've got our version of the X Files, Nick. What are you talking about? That's right. We are working the X Files. We don't need no badges. We don't need no badges. It's badges for we lame don't need people. No stinking Nick. badges. Yeah, stinking <laughs> badges. Stupid. Yeah, we're gonna solve well, this. We'll show them. Exactly. Well, Nick, let let me show you a little escalation. Is what I'm gonna call this. Um, is it a weird on top escalation of, like the last one? I mean, maybe. First, though, before it jumps right to an escalation, maybe it's going to talk about these cops that we've been talking about a little bit. Yeah, these guys suck. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm incorrect. The cops is segment oh. four. This is segment three. Oh, okay. So, but <laughs> it's, it's still going to talk about the cops. We're going to be talking about the cops a little bit. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, this is probably very cop related. Yeah. I thought you said something else for a second. I'm like, no, uh, she got divorced, we- remember? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, oh, segment no, no. three. <laughs> In the days that followed, Cindy Hack's torment continued unabated. The threatening phone calls persisted. And each morning she would wake to find menacing notes on her front porch, crafted from newspaper and magazine clippings. This escalation prompted the police to take more serious action, launching a comprehensive investigation into the matter. Pat McBride, an officer with eight years on the force, took a personal interest in Cindy's case. His frequent check-ins quickly blossomed into a romantic relationship, leading Pat to move into Cindy's house under the guise of protecting her and furthering the investigation. For a brief period, Pat's presence seemed to ward off the harassment. However, in early November, the uneasy peace was shattered. Pat awoke one morning to find the phone lines dead. Stepping outside to investigate, he discovered the lines had been severed, with a pair of wire cutters discarded nearby, a tangible reminder of the unseen menace lurking in the shadows. The following month brought a renewed wave of terror. The phone calls and ominous notes resumed with relentless frequency. Cindy began hearing footsteps outside her house at night, the sound sending chills down her spine. Yet she was too petrified to look out and identify the intruder. The morning horrors grew more grotesque. Raw meat left by her door, photos of dead bodies tucked under her car's windshield wiper. The macabre tableau reached its apex when Cindy ventured into her backyard and found three dead cats hanging in her garden, a gruesome display that shattered any remaining semblance of normalcy. Once a bubbly and vivacious woman, Cindy was now a shell of her former self, consumed by anxiety and paranoia. Her life turned into a relentless nightmare. I had a lot of emotions in this last segment. <laughs> you know what my favorite Number part one. of this is, Nick? Before yeah. you go through yours? My expressions? No. That's good, too, though. <laughs> is the fact that this guy, he sounds way more sophisticated than me, so it's fun to listen to it, because I'm like, this is awesome. Like, when he goes, the tableau of blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, that's so good. <laughs> yeah. This he, guy's like masterpiece theater. <laughs> he's, he's an educated man. Typically, y'all get, Classically and then this person trained. got shot. <laughs> That's me. Pow, <laughs> pow. Exactly. <laughs> boom, boom. Well, you, you've seen the scripts that I write for mine, and I like, hmm. I put sound effects in there, like pow, pow. And <laughs> he, he does, and too. Like. <laughs> but I, love I, it. I mean, we get rid of them after, but that's how But I it's like fun to write. listen to. Yeah. Um, what's not fun to listen to is how unprofessional these cops are you can't do this i mean listen it, she had protection maybe like i don't know i maybe it's him like i'm suspicious of these guys but i'll tell you mm-hmm. anyone who harms a cat can burn in the deepest parts of hell yeah when i put that part in there i'm like nick's especially going to be mad about this part <laughs> i do not like that 
Mm-hmm. I do not like that one bit. And, and it's good that this is unsolved because I'd be after him. It wasn't even one, Nick. It wasn't even two. It was three. I know. I know. Did you find anything odd about that section? Uh, Everything. Yeah, that's a good answer. This guy just takes a personal interest in the investigation. He helps out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then he moves in with her and they're Mm -hmm. dating. Or I don't know if he moved in, but they're dating for sure. Well, romantic involvement. Right, right. I believe Jada Smith calls it an entanglement. This is definitely an entanglement. Right. Um, So it it slacks off for a bit, right? For a little while, there's a little bit of peace. And then while they're still involved, things starts happening. Mm -hmm. She starts hearing these footsteps outside. Yeah, but she's too scared to look outside. I mean, can't blame her. Last time she went to the window and peeked out. The, the ring ring she's like hello stop looking through the window you no. bum i know you're home <laughs> like, oh don't so do i that. probably wouldn't i probably wouldn't look either so uh oh. but yeah she's too petrified to look now yeah. something that i found real interesting mm-hmm. maybe this is me in 2024 some raw meat sitting out front of the door yes yeah, i mean thank you but I mean, now, Dad, I've been like, oh, my gosh, that's $7 a pound. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever left that. No, we, we, we talked about supermarket prices before. <laughs> this guy's exactly. Like, do they hate me or do they like me? Yeah, I this is a 50 50. We're having stew tonight, yeah. kids. Stew. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, back, but back then, prices were normal. So they were probably like, oh, this is horrifying. Probably. I mean, it'd be a little scary. I'm assuming if they put packages out there, it's probably not uh, with plastic wrap on it. So. <laughs> Yeah, probably. just random chunks of meat little, thrown all over the place. Cooler pack, little cooler yeah. pack there to keep exactly. It it was nowadays, to the month club. <laughs> That's true. Nowadays, someone just be splattering like bologna all over the place because you know oh, yeah, the cost of meat. To. Oscar Mayer slices <laughs> all over the ground. <laughs> yeah, you you well, go outside and you find raw meat strewn around you. You're like, oh my god, they my really goodness. hate me. This is some crazy like, stuff they went right here. A lot of work. A lot of yeah. work and they're very expensive. That was twenty dollars worth of meat right there. <laughs> I know. Costco's oh. like three hours away. This can't be cheap. <laughs> can't be cheap. Crazy. Right. The other thing, and I found this extremely interesting. I'm not even sure how you mm-hmm. get these, but <laughs> photos of dead bodies tucked under her windshield wipers of her car. Yeah. Yeah. Back this then, is the ages. Internet these. Yeah. Correct. I mean, this is 1980s. There's where are you getting pictures of dead bodies from? You know who has those? I do know who has those, Nick. The police. The police does have that, Nick. That's it. That's impressive they that do. you put that together. Yep. Yep. So can I lay a little conspiracy theory for you? People yeah. are going to think I'm the conspiracy theorist here. I mean, maybe. Maybe I am. This is your Probably. episode. I didn't even choose this one, Nick. That's that's true. So you can so do whatever here, you want. Here it is. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe this is a small town. Maybe this is a small town. Could be. And everyone knows everyone's business, and they know that Cindy's broken up with her husband. That's right. They didn't like it. Right. Or they did like it. Oh, or they did like Cause it. Because Cin- cause Cindy caught their eye. They like Cindy is a, a dateable ex-wife yep right right this would be this would be looking with binoculars into her window okay yeah so but here's the thing i don't know how to approach women because i've spent too many late nights working at the police station and eating donuts and eating donuts and so i start doing things to make her call the police and i start off small to see if she catches it so she calls up my buddies or maybe it's even me and i'm just like "Ah, maybe you should get an unlisted number but she probably should you know let's not take this any further yeah and and then it doesn't really work so i go and i mess up her house and i'm liking where it's going we get more involved i take a personal interest my name's pat Mm -hmm. i'm like you know what i'll I am personally involved in this. I'm going to solve this and I'm going to protect you. Let's go out for dinner and talk about it. 
that's solid right and then you know we're dating so i i don't really have to do that anymore no. but then the adventure and spice is gone from our Ooh. relationship yeah so i, like I this. want i want to remind her she needs me needs you that's yeah, right so Pat. i go in the yeah i go to the, like the medical examiner's office and i take some crazy pictures uh-huh. and yep yeah, and then it goes from there uh-huh. and he's a real sicko because he did that thing to cats very sick now yeah i like where that goes what about this nick i didn't even think mm-hmm. of this till you said all that what if she called the police department right and old officer johnson he uh old he took the phone yeah because he had a thing for her uh, he's like hey baby what's going on hey let old officer johnson come over and take good care of you okay <laughs> But then this bum comes over right. and she starts falling for this guy. Yeah. And plan he's like, ruined. yeah, plan ruined. Maybe it's a different mm. cop. Maybe. It's definitely a cop, I feel. It, I mean, we may never know, Nick, but we have speculation so far. That's right. Oh, we got, if speculations were pennies, we'd be billionaires. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, we already had our thought process about the cops. We've not been super happy with them. No. You know? No. You know, and they keep coming out for all these mm-hmm. different things that's happening. And I don't know. Now, what if I told you that mm-hmm. the next sections starts out with the cops? I think you had mentioned that before, so I'm not surprised by that. Yeah. But is it going to get weirder or is it going to they gonna start doing their job? That's where I'm going to be surprised, probably. I mean, let's mm-hmm. put it this way. Mm-hmm. Let's put it this way. I start with the cops and then we kind of move right. forward with the weirdness. All right. All right. I'm down. Check this out. The local police began to harbor doubts about the authenticity of Cindy Hack's claims. Each time she reported a new incident, officers would arrive, investigate, and invariably find no evidence of an intruder. The skepticism grew, especially among Cindy's acquaintances, including her boyfriend, Officer Pat McBride. Pat confided in his colleagues that he was never present when the stalker called or when any disturbances occurred. His knowledge of these events came solely from Cindy's recounting them afterward. Frustrated by the police's lack of belief in her ordeal, Cindy broke off her relationship with Pat. Determined to escape the terror that had engulfed her life, she decided to move to a different town. Just days before her planned relocation, her friend Agnes visited her. Finding no answer at the front door, Agnes circled to the back and was startled to discover Cindy crouched behind the stairs a black nylon stocking wrapped tightly around her neck. Cindy, however, seemed eerily calm, her eyes fixed on the shed. Alarmed, Agnes rushed to her friend, asking urgently, Cindy, what are you doing? What's on your neck? Cindy turned to Agnes, her eyes wide with panic. She recounted a terrifying encounter that had occurred just moments earlier. While heading to the shed, a man had leapt from the shadows, strangling her with the nylon and threatening to harm her family if she dared to look at him. Their struggle was interrupted by Agnes's arrival, which frightened the assailant away. Agnes, shocked and concerned, pulled the nylon from Cindy's neck and ushered her inside, locking all the doors and windows behind them. Cindy promptly called the police. However, when the officers arrived, they found only Cindy's account and the nylon stocking as evidence. The police, growing increasingly skeptical, believed the stocking belonged to Cindy and suspected she had staged the attack herself. The seeds of doubt took root, casting a shadow over Cindy's credibility, even as her world continued to unravel into chaos and fear. Ooh, some twisty turnies in here. <laughs> I gotta give some twists and turns, Nick. That. This is Unsolved Mysteries, man. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, Pat's... So... You probably could, no one's going to see but you, but Mm -hmm. I go through like I'm very expressive sometimes when I'm listening to these. Mm -hmm. So I was like, 
mm, Pat's never around when this happens. Or is he outside the house? Yeah. But then, but then if his plan worked, she broke up with him anyway. So that's kind of backfired there. That's a big backfire. Yeah. It, but then, um, you know, it's like it, it looks a lot. Then that idea got into my head that maybe she's staging this, but I can't figure out why. But then I'm like, well, this is what the cops have kind of been setting up that she's been staging this. Could be. So I don't, yeah, I don't know if I want to fall for that. So I'm torn a little bit. Still real suspicious of the cops. Well, let me put it to you this way, Nick. Mm -hmm. The beauty of these mysteries is there's always a ton of different options, usually. Mm -hmm. Right now, we only really have two options. Okay. Right. The first one is that somebody's doing this, or option two is she's doing it to get attention. Right. Now, she got Which a divorce. That does happen. It does happen. Listen, some people yeah. have, uh, looking for uh, words here, uh, conditions that can mm -hmm. cause these things to happen. Okay. Mental yep. conditions. Okay. And uh, some people are schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how that happens. Uh, so I want to give you an option going down that route. Okay. There is multiple personalities that can occur. Mm -hmm. yep. And these people will talk to themselves as multiple people, sometimes two different people, sometimes mm -hmm. three different people. Now, I do find one thing interesting. If you are going to attack somebody... Are you going to use a mm -hmm. nylon sock to do it? Like the nylon laggings? Well, I guess only if it was really handy. Or it's one of those people that have a weird kink for that kind of thing. That could be too. Listen, hey, it's, it's anything's that, possible. I've heard of that specific thing. Correct. Correct. So, uh, me personally, no. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make sense, right? It's a yeah. little odd. No, it doesn't. It the doesn't, other thing, but then, you know, why would she choose that? That is true. I mean, doesn't make sense. No. But think about it. Every time she's called the cops, they can't ever find mm -hmm. anything. And it's more than one cop coming in. So right. even if and now someone I'm thinking want, back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Think, follow like that path. Nick. How, how, how did her key get on the pillow? Well, it's very she odd. The key. She would have the key. Yeah, they can't find anything. Mm -hmm. um, she never is able to provide any real information. She doesn't look outside when things happen. Right. So, I mean, that's one op possibility as well. There's a lot of gray area in her stories. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of those things that if you think back to the previous segments, it almost like flashes different memories of things you have. Correct. Because um, you start going down one road yeah. and then you, you get a little bit further and you go, well, wait a second. It's kind of like, uh, have you ever watched, uh, is it Shutter Island? Leonardo DiCaprio, oh, yeah. have you seen that? I love that movie. Yeah. Because there's a lot of foreshadowing. When you get about halfway through the movie, right. you go, oh, wait a second. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. That's kind of yeah, like this to a degree. Thinking, uh, see, see, this one's extra difficult because you could think that way, but also things have been specifically arranged to make you think that way. That's true. Right? That's true. Because we do have neglectful cops in this story. We yep. know that for a fact. Correct. Um, so it could be either. It's writ like with the information we have, I don't think we could decide that. But right now we do have three options. The three options really are mm -hmm. it's a cop. Yeah. It's her doing it to get attention. Or mm -hmm. the third one is she has a multiple personality and even she doesn't even know what's going on because it's the other personality. Yeah. 
But which is kind of funny. We've totally discounted anyone else other than the cops or her, really. So far. Is so what far. I'm saying. So far. So yeah. far. Um, Even the ex husband, we're like, eh. Do, do we know what they split over, split up over and who decided that? Yeah, but it wasn't really relevant. It wasn't no. like uh, the way they, ex- well, the way she explained it in the, in the story. Right. Um, or should I say someone that spoke on her behalf was that it was a case where they just had disagreements all the time and they wasn't happy being married, but it sounded like it was amicable between the two of them. Like she didn't, she had issues with him. He had issues with her. Her biggest issues was, uh, there's, I gotta be careful my wording here. She said there was a lot of verbal and physical things that was happening that she didn't like. And that's why she had left. Yeah. Yeah. But he said that that's sort of. It was made no, up, so. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Yeah. What else would he say? You're like, right. yeah, I did it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm awful. I'm awful. I'm a horrible yeah, person. I'm proud yeah. of it, too. That's right. I'd do it again. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah I'd do it again. I hope she remarries me. No. <laughs> He's not going to say that. No. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm like, I had an initial thought of like, yeah, maybe it's the ex, but. Um, if it was a sort of somewhat amicable split, then why? Right. Right. But if it was an amicable split, then that sort of erodes my thinking that she might do this for attention also. Which is she possible. could have kept that attention, right? She could so. have. That's correct. And I think that's... Yep. If you believe that it might be her or a multiple personality, the cops are seeing this and they go, there's no real proof of anyone other than you. Like in a case like this, it's a nylon stocking. What does she have? Nylon stockings. Well, isn't that a coincidence? Did they break into your house and steal your nylon nylon stocking to do this to yourself? I mean, they could have took it off of her and done that. They could have. Absolutely. But she didn't say that. She said that he came up behind him. And put a nylon stocking right. on her. She didn't. They did. They that did not take true. it off of her. So mm. what I really want to point out at this point is yeah. she's looking at the cops and she's mad because she's like, "You're not right. doing your job," and the cops mm. are looking at her and going, uh, "You're not doing your job," and we believe it is you because right. all the things that's happening is things you have access to. Yeah, which which is a fact, but I don't feel like that should be their first go to. Well, we you wasn't know. there d- 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 getting the evidence either. Like if the first time yeah, it's like, true. oh man, this guy's gave me a call and he he told me he knew I was here and I looked out the window. And then the second time, yeah. oh man, they ripped up my pillows. Oh, Agnes right. was over and man, you should see all the feathers in my house. Oh, and he put a mm-hmm. key there and they're like, where did the key come from? I don't know, yeah, officer. Well, that's, that's what I asked. So Yeah, exactly. That's what they'd be asking yeah. too, Nick. Uh, and then the third time- yeah. Oh, he put a nylon on my face and told me if I turned around, he would hurt me and my family, blah, blah. So the cops are like, this is lame. This is you. We know this is you at yeah. this point. So mm. she's mad at them. They're mad at her. Right. Agnes is confused. We're confused. Agnes is super confused, poor lady. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know. It's 50-50 for me right now. Well, like I, I don't know if I can decide one way or the other yet. Well, we're about to have a superhero jump into this story a little bit, and maybe that will help really? us. Maybe it'll help us figure some stuff out, Nick. Uh, do you want to go to the okay. next section and hear who this superhero is know. and what genius yeah, really ideas curious. he's got? Mm, superheroes, really Nick. <laughs> mm, Homeland, Homelander. <laughs> <laughs> Realizing that the police were dismissive of her plight, Cindy took matters into her own hands and hired a private detective named Ozzy Caban. Immediately, Ozzy fortified her property with floodlights and provided her with a two-way radio that continuously broadcasted back to him. This way, he could be alerted to any danger even if Cindy couldn't reach the radio. He also installed a panic button that would send an alarm to both him and the police. In January of 1984, Mere weeks into the investigation, Ozzy heard unsettling noises over the two-way radio. The sounds were chaotic, indicating some sort of struggle within Cindy's house. He tried to communicate with her but received no response. Alarmed, 
Ozzie rushed to her house, knocking frantically on the door. When there was no answer, he kicked the door down. Inside, he found Cindy lying motionless in the hallway. A chilling note was pinned to her hand with a paring knife, the blade driven through both the note and her flesh. The note read, You're dead, lady. Cindy also had a black nylon stocking tightly wound around her neck. Initially, Ozzy feared the worst, but upon closer inspection, he detected a faint pulse. Rushing her to the hospital, Cindy eventually regained consciousness. She could only recall feeling a needle being injected into her arm before losing consciousness. Despite the severity of the attack, the police remained skeptical, convinced Cindy had staged the entire event. They neglected to take fingerprints from the scene, including from the knife and the note. Ozzy, however, believed in Cindy's innocence. He argued that the angle of the injection made it nearly impossible for her to have done it herself. Once Cindy was discharged from the hospital, the police, albeit still skeptical, continued their surveillance of her property. As always, no stalker activity was observed while the officers were present. The threats and harassment seemed to occur only during the gaps in their watch, perpetuating the eerie pattern that had become Cindy's nightmare. Hmm. Interesting. Mm. So, just just to break it down, mm -hmm. a lot in that the yeah the private detective heard some struggling mm. going on on the radio. Yes, uh, he busted eventually busted down the door, found her laying face down. I believe he said. Uh, the exact words was. Uh, he's heard a struggling. That. He found Cindy laying motionless in the hallway. Uh, oh, so we don't know if it was face down or face up. No. But it seemed like the cops also agreed that she had been injected with something. Yes, she was definitely injected with something. Hmm. So she was definitely injected with something. And she had a note driven through her hand with a knife. Pairing knife. Pairing knife. Which was probably found in the house. Right. It and the said, angle of the injection would have been difficult for her to do herself. Correct. Mm. And the note said... Which I, I... Yeah, you're dead, lady. You're dead, lady. <laughs> Yeah. Gosh dang! Uh, inaccurate, but <laughs> yeah, a little inaccurate. You didn't do a good job. Yeah, I, well, there's a couple things here. They're saying the injection would be hard for her to do herself. Um, stabbing a note on your own hand with a paring knife, uh, I would chance to say is not mentally easy to do. No. Unless we stick with the multiple personality thing. Yeah. Um, possibly. Um, sounds of a struggle over the radio, that can be faked. It can be. Like that's, an, that's not difficult. But kind of leaning away from it doing it to herself in the stalking thing again. Um, Black nylon stockings. Yeah. She would have been questioned about it first time. That's one of the things that they used against her. Yeah. I feel like they said, that this is just one of your stockings. So I feel like if it was her, she might not have used that again. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I noticed as well is they said the cops continued the surveillance of her house. Yeah. Now... In surveillance, cops are usually trying to be hidden or not let people know that they're watching a place. That's correct. And so nothing would happen. Would, right. So no one knows they're there, but nothing would happen. Except when they're not there, it would happen. Correct. So the only people who would know are probably the cops when they're there or when they're not there. That'd be a guess. Yeah. I mean, it is the 80s. So remember, they're probably talking mm -hmm. on their cop radio. 
That's true. It, I wonder if it was just weird wording, but they said continued their surveillance. Were they surveilling when the detective, the private eye was working for? Well, they had done it before then also. So they had, they've done it multiple okay. times during this time right. frame, but every time they've done yeah. it, nothing's ever happened. Right. Hmm. Now, there's one thing that I want you to think about. Okay. Let's say you've had these all up to this point, these same things has happened to you. Right. And let's say you hire me as a private investigator. You're like, private inv investigator mm -hmm. Bert, hey, what do right. I do? And I'm going to be like, you know what? I'm going to put this two-way radio in here. So no matter what happens, mm -hmm. I can hear what's going on and I'll rush to you if you need me. There's also a panic button right. that's over there. You press that button, mm -hmm. I get notified and the cops get notified. Now let's right. say there's a struggle. That means that you clearly are fighting with somebody because there's a struggle. Mm -hmm. Would you not say nothing? Well, I have thought about that, but then I'm thinking maybe like put his hand over her mouth or she was being strangled too much to do so. Could be. But but yeah, like I'm sure you could get out some kind of eep or, you know. I mean, some kind if, of noise. If you're in the house, I would assume you'd hear someone sneaking up yeah. on you. They're probably not tiptoeing around the house. Uh, I don't know. They might be. They could be hiding behind a door and they get you when you come in the bedroom or... Could be. It's hard to say. Like, I mean, everyone feels like, yeah, I would kind of know if someone was sneaking around the house, but... I would, but there's a I lot would of people who get surprised every year. There is people that does get surprised by intruders. That's correct. Yeah. Let's put it this way. The first moment, because mm -hmm. I, again, I'm going to assume you're probably a little bit on edge if this is happening this often. Oh, yeah. So yeah. you become way more in tuned. Right. You're kind of glancing around and looking at things a little bit closer and hmm, trying to get a... The first moment, let, let's say the shoes was on the opposite foot. You're the private investigator right. and I'm her. Mm -hmm. Right. First moment, something's off. Nick, help! Help! Nick! Nick, yeah. there's a guy! Yeah, for sure. Nick. Nick, 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 come! Come here! Come here! Help! Right. Help! Get the cops! None of yeah. that. Not a thing. No. But if or they like, out from behind something and got you. Yeah, but if they got me, that you still have that split second to scream something. Right. That's true. That is true. I had taken it that the sounds of struggle might have included that. Maybe not. Well, she didn't say anything. That's the... Right. Okay. Like, do you know how hard it'd be to sneak up on someone and grab them by the mouth or choke them to prevent them from talking? Like, that's... There's a few seconds to go by yeah. there. No matter who yeah, you are. Yeah, that would probably be difficult. It'd be a little difficult. A little yeah. bit. I've never had anyone do that to me. So I can't. Yeah, I think it would be difficult. I mean, it'd probably be a little bit difficult. Just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. The, 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 as soon as we get a piece of evidence for one conclusion, we get, a, we get a, another piece of evidence for the opposite conclusion. So it's, it's really true. a balancing scale here that's going on, in my opinion. That's what makes a story so much fun. It, it's it like the Circleville fun. letters. What, when you first started researching this, what was your opinion? So my first opinion mm -hmm. up to this point, right. I thought it was the ex-husband at first. Okay, so you leaned more into that. That was just a passing thought for me. Yeah, for me at first, I'm like, if I didn't know anything else, it's got to be the ex-husband. They was married for right. all this time. Mm -hmm. He's annoyed. Maybe he's having someone else do it. And then I thought from then on, it was her 100% until mm. I got to uh, roughly this point. And I'm like, so you, you never that'd suspected be a the cops at all. No. Mm. I was annoyed with the cops. Because right. I'm like, they're not doing their job. Yeah. But you know what that reminded me of? What? The Circleville letters. Because the cops didn't do their freaking job right. in that one either. Right. Because if you remember in the Circleville uh -huh. letters, they didn't freaking yeah. take fingerprints of the gun. Mm -hmm. They let the gun just roll around. They didn't check. They oh, yeah. There was 
bullet casings inside the car. They was like, ah, someone shot him and kept moving. Like they screwed everything. I, think I up initially on that. expected them too in that story. I think yeah, that was you did. You just don't trust yeah. people, Nick. It's fine. I, well, you know that's it's kind of funny because in real life I really am kind of trusting. Yeah, well, like I don't, I don't suspect. I think the best in people, but I also don't put people in a position where I need to trust them. That's right. You so can't. Maybe I am distrustful. I don't know. Maybe. But either way, I, I would assume she's had a pretty rough go of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, definitely. Yeah, I would say that Cindy is. Uh, she's she's having a struggle bus right now. It's like things are escalating uh, relatively quickly. And what's up with all the stockings? Yeah. I know, right? Is like how she, many is she famous for stockings or what? Yeah, I mean, how many stockings stockings come in a pack? Yeah, I don't Three, know. Three, five. I know reg, regular socks are expensive, so yeah. But these are like nylon so these are real expensive yeah. this is the good stuff nick oh okay i didn't I, i'm really unaware of what nylon stocks stockings would cost there i would assume they'd be more than wow. socks i would assume we, we need like a, a a lady to chime in on these things when we're doing these episodes i guess yeah, because the best part is that there's annoying. probably ladies out there that go, neither one of these guys know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Do they even know what a nylon stocking is? <laughs> you do, because you put them on when you're robbing banks. Oh, that's right. Those things, and they give you little yeah. bunny ears. Yeah, they give you a little <laughs> bunny ears. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, I totally understand now. Well, um, yeah, the story... I, man, this would, that would be a wild thing to do to herself. Oh, I'm yeah, saying. I mean... At this point, I was did, like, that's it's crazy. I'm like, it's clearly not her. She's not going to put a paring knife through her hand unless, again, multiple personalities, which I did think of. But yeah. even then, I'm like, I don't know that they would do that. Like, after we record this, just go in your kitchen and open the drawer and look at the paring knives. <laughs> yeah. Like, that is the, of all the kitchen, all the knives in my kitchen, that's the least one I'd want to try to force through my hand. Yeah. The only thing worse would be a butter knife. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's right behind a, a butter knife. <laughs> right. If I had to do that to myself, I'd take the, like, one of the sharper ones oh, yeah. or something. The cuttery like, knife, for sure. Yeah, it's, yeah, something like that. Um, Man, I don't know. That's just wild. It could be here, but I don't know. That's rough. Well, there's some excitement that's going to happen in this next segment, Nick, because I call this a two for one. I didn't oh, stop it where I typically would, and I gave you okay. insight to two things that happened. Mm. And it happened I'm fast. Interested. I'm okay. interested. Life for Cindy James continued to spiral downward over the next year. Her mental health deteriorated rapidly, fueled by the constant fear of her elusive stalker and the humiliation of not being believed by the police. On December 11th, 1985, Cindy was found in a ditch six miles from her home, wearing a single work boot and a single glove. Her body was battered with cuts and bruises, suffering from hypothermia, and once again, a black nylon stocking was wrapped around her neck. She had no memory of the attack. Despite the severity of her condition, the police dismissed it as another staged event and did not pursue any significant follow-up. After a few days in the hospital, Cindy returned home, but the terror of being alone compelled her to ask her friends, Agnes and Tom, to stay with her. They agreed, hoping to offer some solace. The first night of their stay, Cindy was jolted awake by strange noises coming from the basement. She roused Agnes and Tom, who heard the sounds too. They cautiously descended to the first floor, opened the basement door, and were met with the horrifying sight of a raging fire. Cindy dashed to the phone to call 911, only to discover the phone lines had been cut. Tom ran outside to seek help and stumbled upon a man standing silently in front of the house. Tom shouted at him to call 911, but the man turned and fled without a word, disappearing into the night. The fire department was eventually summoned by a neighbor Tom found, and they managed to extinguish the blaze. The ensuing investigation confirmed it was an act of arson. The police, 
finding no signs of forced entry, concluded that someone inside the house must have started the fire. They accused Cindy of setting it herself, perpetuating what they believed to be a delusional pattern of staging incidents. Agnes and Tom vehemently denied these accusations, insisting Cindy would never endanger their lives and that they had not heard her moving about that night. Despite their defense, the toll of these accusations drove Cindy into a deep depression, leading to a 10-week hospitalization under intensive psychiatric care. The doctors ultimately deemed her not a threat to herself or others, and she was released. During this tumultuous time, Cindy confided in the police, revealing her suspicion that her ex-husband Roy was behind all the attacks. This accusation added yet another layer to the already complex and harrowing mystery surrounding Cindy's life. I it got some frustration here. Because, <laughs> so, she goes against her friends. Mm -hmm. They hear the sound going on in the basement. This was after she From was found in a ditch. Uh, after she was found in a ditch, which let me say would be even harder to beat yourself up and, <laughs> and throw up yourself in a, in a ditch. Yeah. And strangle yourself with another black stocking, which is a pattern here. Yeah. Now I'm starting to think that it is really someone's kink. Um, Could be. But, but so, yeah, so she invites two people over to her house. Mm -hmm. She's with them, has roused them from their sleep. They are on the second floor. And they can hear mm -hmm. rustling in the basement. They go downstairs. They continue to hear it. She's with them. Mm -hmm. Yep. They open the door. There's a fire in the basement that someone has lit. They go outside and there's a man standing there who won't talk to him and then runs away. <laughs> yep. And the cops are like, you know what? Cindy did it. <laughs> did it to herself. <laughs> So, yep. Cindy can be two places at once. Yep. Cindy can throw her voice floors down. Yep. Cindy can light a fire. Mm -hmm. Cindy can project the image of a man outside her house. Absolutely. These cops are the worst. Because <laughs> <laughs> you imagine... <laughs> I don't oh, man. even understand it. It's like, could you even two imagine witnesses and they're like, I, I don't know what to say. How can you even say that? <laughs> like for me, I can almost imagine being Cindy and being like, mm -hmm. here's what happened. And they go, yeah, sure. Cindy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, no, yeah. but seriously, like Tom saw the guy. Yeah, sure. Sure. He did. I bet he did. Cindy. Yeah. Tom goes over. No, there was a man. Oh, okay, yeah, a man was there. Okay, yeah, sure, Cindy Tom. did. It. <laughs> yeah, like, this is mental. <laughs> like, does does Tom oh, and man. Agnes have a history of like lying to the cops? Like, I don't get this. Just Cindy, just Cindy. Like and they're just like they're all these three people. Yeah, they're just all. They're, it's a shared delusion. In fact, we don't even think that Tom and Agnes exist. We don't believe that in them. It could be. Could be like Fight Club. Yeah. Like, oh my now, goodness! These now guys. something something I do find interesting. Mm -hmm. Cindy talks to the cops and she goes, "Hey, maybe yeah. it was my ex husband Roy." Right. But Tom saw a guy in front of the house. Wouldn't she say, what did this guy look like? Right. Well, that's what I thought, too. And that's kind of odd. That this, this is kind of the first time she's mentioned the ex-husband that, that we know of, anyway. It is. Absolutely. Yeah. But but he, well, if Tom's been a friend for a while, they, he probably knows the ex. I mean, I would assume but he didn't say anything that I got out of that. No. Nope. Like actually, I didn't even hear him say a description, really. He didn't. But again, his house was on fire, and he's like, dude, call call right. somebody. They're like, what are you standing there staring at my house for, yeah. freak? What are you right. doing with these black nylon stockings in your hands? Like, that's weird. Yeah. 
Did he have yeah. stockings in his hand? No, I'm just saying that would have made the story oh, more okay. interesting. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, that didn't happen. Sorry. I made that point. I like, How did I miss that? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, well, Cindy doing it herself is totally out of my mind unless she hired someone to stand out there oh, and yeah, hired I mean, someone to rattle around in her basement so she could bring people to listen to it. Yeah, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. No, I, it's no. just a, it's very interesting because I feel like the cops are just obviously screwing everything up. Yeah, it's, but it, it just makes me think even more they're in on it somehow. Oh, I mean, if anything, well, see, and we thought the same thing with Circleville because we're like, right. how do you screw this many things up and not be involved I somehow? I think we underestimate the the incompetence of people. Well, I think we expect too much from people. I think it's kind of like with the cops, like they get in their trends of things they got to do. And then it's like, mm-hmm. ah, here comes Cindy calling again. Gosh, dang it. Yeah. This chick. God, it's kind of like that annoying customer you get at work right. and the phone rings and you're like, oh, then again, this oh, is going to be another man. two hours. I was just about to yeah. go get some fresh donuts. Yeah, it, it's like uh, it's 458 PM. Yeah, exactly. You leave work at five and it's like ring ring. <laughs> yeah, it's like freaking Cindy. Gosh dang yeah. it, girl. What is yeah. your problem? Get your life together. Yeah, and then they come over. Like, they're just rushing. Herself. I'm gonna. They're <laughs> out there with the pen and going like that. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yep. Yeah, uh yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll get to you uh, maybe tomorrow. Uh yeah. All right. Yeah. Well listen. I don't know what to tell you. Might might be uh cindy or maybe it's roy yeah. we don't know we'll figure it out yeah. but she did accuse roy yeah for the first time for the first time now yeah. so i wonder what made her think that maybe she's just throwing out anyone just to investigate someone well yeah you know? here's the thing this next mm-hmm. segment segment seven there's only eight segments okay they're, they're two bigger segments though right they're a little yeah. over two minutes a pop okay Okay. The next segment, there's audio that uh, that I want to find to include. Mm-hmm. I could not find a clean copy of it. I've heard it, uh, okay. but there's things over it to where I'm like, I can't really use that. I, I'm going to yeah. find it, though. I know it's out there. I just have to find it. But there's audio proof that I'm going to try to add to this next, next segment. So Nick's not going to hear it. But you guys out there, if I found this audio, you guys are going to hear it. <laughs> You lucky devils. <laughs> <laughs> but I will describe it for Nick when we come back. But I think this uh, this next part, again, we're going to, I'm going to take you on a roller coaster in this next one again, Nick. All right. The police immediately brought Roy in for questioning. He emphatically denied all allegations, asserting he had nothing to do with the harassment of his ex-wife. In a twist... Roy claimed he, too, had been a victim of the mysterious stalker. He described receiving several threatening phone calls and even played a voicemail left by the harasser for the police. After verifying Roy's alibis and corroborating his story, the police ruled him out as a suspect. For the next three and a half years, Cindy continued to receive menacing phone calls and messages. Yet no one but Cindy ever witnessed these occurrences firsthand. Despite her private investigator, Ozzy, steadfastly believing her every word, the Richmond Police Department grew weary and eventually stopped responding to her distress calls. On the evening of May 25, 1989, Agnes arrived at Cindy's house for their scheduled game of bridge. Knocking on the door yielded no response. Concerned, Agnes tried the front door and found it unlocked. Assuming Cindy might be upstairs, she let herself in only to be met with an unsettling silence. After a few minutes with no sign of Cindy, Agnes began a thorough search of the house, but her friend was nowhere to be found. She quickly called the police. A search was launched, and it didn't take long for the investigators to locate Cindy's car in a supermarket parking lot. The scene was disconcerting. Blood smeared on the driver's side door. The contents of Cindy's purse, including her credit cards and ID, scattered on the ground nearby and groceries still in the trunk, suggesting a recent shopping trip. Despite the discovery of her car, there were no clues as to Cindy's whereabouts. 
Her friends and family feared she had been kidnapped by her stalker, while the police suspected yet another staged event. Regardless of the differing opinions, one fact was clear. Cindy James had vanished without a trace. What's got to happen to this poor woman for someone to take her seriously? Like... <laughs> Now, before we get too far in, and I feel that right. this, this is important, mm -hmm. Roy played for the police a voicemail, which I've heard. Mm -hmm. It is the creepiest voicemail I think I've ever heard. It sounds like a female going, Yeah, dead me. Like that. Like a female doing that. That's what it's... If it's you and you're a man, well, you sound like a girl. <laughs> okay. Well, dang. Yeah, I hope it ain't Cindy doing that. I don't know. <laughs> that's probably the first thing the cops saw. It's like, oh, that's Cindy. That's Cindy. It sounds like Cindy trying to sound like a demon. Yeah, yeah that's exactly what it yeah. sounds like. We only got one female in this town, and it's Cindy. <laughs> it's Cindy. Yeah. Bye. So, <laughs> oh, my goodness. And, of course, back in those days, she's in the parking lot of a grocery store. We don't have cameras on everything back then. No, it's the 80s. The cameras was, right. like, shoulder-mounted. Like, you had to... Right. It's like having a bazooka. It's funny. <laughs> they started out that way. They turned yeah. small. And now they're going back to the yeah. shoulder-mounted one. Everyone kind of. wants a big shoulder mount, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's funny that the police are getting so many calls. They're like... Oh, there's Cindy. Uh, voicemail. Uh, yeah. Voicemail. Yeah, stopped responding. Voicemail. <laughs> they're like, you can't do that. Yeah. yeah, in Canada you can, apparently in the 80s. They're like, screw this noise. Oh, yes. This is stupid. Probably now, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Hey, how about you have a talk with yourself and stop trying to involve us? We got donuts to, yeah. to hand out. <laughs> yeah, I guess. We oh, put Canadian goodness. maple syrup on them. Because <laughs> it's Canada. <laughs> we call them beaver tails. That's what that's right. <laughs> beaver tail. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I found uh, that interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Um. So yeah, now, I, what's I your really thought? I just don't know what to. I really don't know what to say. I've totally ruled out that it's her doing this to herself. Like it's, okay. it's just not possible at this point. Um. And to abduct herself from a supermarket to take time to throw all her stuff on the ground. Do you to think do it that, after she's grocery shopped? Do you think it's just a coincidence? Maybe someone, because her credit cards and stuff was spewed all over the car. Yeah. Her right. groceries were still in the trunk. Mm -hmm. You know, like a coincidence that she got robbed. She by just happened to get random. robbed by a rando. Yeah. Uh, it could be, but I feel like they would have took her credit cards because that was super easy to, to do fraud on back then. Back in the 80s, it was, yeah. But yeah. why would they go through her to stage it to make it look like a robbery? You think? No. Maybe if they're real dumb. Yeah. I mean, they could have took money and stuff like that and just left the credit cards. They could have. Like, it, it's really hard to say. It doesn't seem random. I mean, there's blood on the driver's side door and stuff like that. She's been stalked for literally, what, four years are we up to at this stage? For sure, yeah. Well, this was three and a half years went by. I think it started yeah. in 81. I think we're in like 87, 86 or 87 at this yeah, point. So, so like so five years. it's been going on a long time. Yeah, five, six um, years. If I were her, I wouldn't go anywhere on my own. <laughs> I would not. All right. You Should have stayed she, married. She, she she just needs a witness just to live her life. <laughs> she does. Because she's like, oh, yeah, I went to the grocery store. No, you didn't. Yeah. I don't believe a thing Cindy says. Don't Cindy believe a word. Lies. Don't believe don't a word. Don't even respond to when she calls the cops. Yeah. Right? That's uh, tough. She's she got to be so frustrated. So frustrated. If, if you had to, because there's only one segment left, and mm. ultimately we figure out the conclusion to this because you know we have to it's, it's the last segment yeah. Nick. if you had to guess just wild guess is what mm -hmm. we'll call it do you think that because it is odd this one's a little bit different there's no right. telltale signs there's the other thing is that I would maybe mention is if she was at a store 
And clearly this person got her as she was getting in her car. Again, mm-hmm. she's going to be, they said that she's so heavily nervous and anxious all the time. Right. She had to go to a psychiatric hospital for a while. Yeah. So, you know, she's on guard all the time. Do right. you think she wouldn't notice someone sneaking up on her? Uh, yeah, I feel like she would. But I mean, there's always people who are just oblivious. Like I There know. is. There is. But do yeah. you think it, if it wasn't, do you think it could possibly possibly have been a stranger that snuck up on her? Yeah. See, we can't say otherwise on this because it, it we just doesn't don't seem to fit the MO, right? It does not because everything else has been yeah, pretty much the same. Yeah. So whoever did it, they, they gave her time to get back, open her, uh, open her trunk, put her groceries away. Right. Close the trunk, come right. around to the side of the car. So they could have been hiding on that side of the car. And if she just wasn't paying attention, that could be like, it's hard to say what could be. I mean, you know, people straight up, some people just have bad luck. They do have bad luck occurrence, right? It could be. Do you want to close this out and just see, just, just put it all together and then figure out if we can figure out what's going on. Yeah. I guess I need every drop of information to make my statement on this. Well, here we go. Let's let's see uh, let's let's see what we got. Two weeks after Cindy's disappearance, a road worker, desperate for a restroom, ventured to an abandoned building near their work site. The overgrown yard offered a semblance of privacy, and he informed his crew of his destination before heading off. As he navigated the dense foliage around the side of the building, he was hit by an overwhelming stench one of the worst he had ever encountered. He assumed the abandoned property had become a dumping ground for trash, exacerbated by the hot weather. Undeterred, he continued to the back of the building, found a suitable spot, and relieved himself. On his return, he noticed something he had missed earlier, partially obscured by the tall grass. Stepping closer to get a better look, he was horrified to discover the lifeless body of a woman lying on her side, her hands and feet bound behind her back, with a black nylon stocking around her neck. It was Cindy James. Despite the presence of the nylon stocking, the autopsy revealed Cindy had not died from strangulation. Instead, she succumbed to an overdose of morphine and other drugs. The police brought in a knot expert, who demonstrated that it was possible for Cindy to have tied herself in the position she was found. Coupled with their long-standing belief that Cindy was a pathological liar, the police concluded that her death was a meticulously staged They theorized she had injected herself with a lethal dose, then bound herself to create a dramatic scene. To ensure they left no stone unturned, the police re-interviewed Roy, Cindy's ex-husband. His alibi was solid, and he was never seriously considered a suspect in her death. The case of Cindy James filled with relentless harassment, skepticism, and a tragic end, left a haunting mystery in its wake, one that blurred the lines between victimhood and self-infliction, leaving those who knew her questioning what truly happened. Halfway through that, I was like, stop the tape, I am done. (laughs) This is too much. Like, you can't. You It's too much. You can't. There's no way she did that. This is no one's fault but hers, Nick. Like, these cops are the most evil, corrupt, (laughs) or brain-dead people that ever existed. Let's put it this way. I can't believe this. I thought the Circleville letter cops were bad. Hmm. They look like freaking Elon Musk's of of the police departments compared to this one. They're like, she was found how? She could tie her hands like that. She did. Yeah. How'd she die? She, I bet she did it. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's too much. Like, I refuse to believe that there's anyone that stupid. Yeah. They've got to be corrupt. <laughs> yeah. Like, holy moly. There's no. Okay. Here, let me put this down. There, There's like even profilers and stuff. There's certain things that people 
do and they don't do when they're going to unsubscribe from life. Correct. Okay. If you're going to do that, you're not going to do all your grocery shopping first. You're just not no. going to do that. No. Like, but what they're thinking you're not, is she's yeah. writing a movie plot and she right. knew the ending. Mm-hmm. So instead of just doing it, she would be that elaborate so that it would always look like it was someone else. That's how the cops uh, basically said it. They, you know that she created this story and they couldn't, she just couldn't do it that way. She would have to make it super yeah. elaborate. So in her passing moments, people could be like, well, it must have been someone else. That's, you know what? I'm going to censor myself, but this is effing stupid. <laughs> you know the best part this, of this? Well, worst hmm. part of this. This is still a solved mystery in Canada as she unsubscribed to life. Uh, I have no doubt whatsoever that those idiots, <laughs> those evil idiots did that. Yes. Like... And they've refused to check into anything because they've concluded their file and they've moved on. Yeah, that's like I, I, I can't imagine how absolutely unlikable Cindy must have been that these cops met her and are like, we're just going to completely F with you for the remainder of your life. <laughs> right. Like, Correct. That is foolish no no she there's no way she tied her feet and her arms behind her back like yeah sure it's possible that someone could do this but how skilled at knots does this person have to be are they a knot expert like the person you hired to figure this out who well, said that it could happen and think about it they was probably like yeah that's not possible and someone probably went How about now? Do you think it's possible now? Yeah. Eh? Exactly. Eh? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, going back to the ex-husband thing, to mm-hmm. me, it sounds like she's just like throwing out like, you know, at least investigate one person. Yeah. You know, like Correct. at least help me. I don't think it's him. Yeah. But, you know, talk to him and maybe he'll think of someone. Right. Or something like that. In which he even said, right. hey, I've got this tape recording of this thing. Yeah. Yeah. So he's kind of he's kind of saying she's not crazy. Yeah. This, this is happening. happening. I've I've been having the same easily, issue as her. Right. Because he easily could have just said, well, I don't, you know, I don't, I didn't do this. I've got no involvement in this. Right. Like it, it doesn't do anything for him. Nothing. To have this pre-recorded message that he just happened to have in case someone asked him something exactly and then I mean I'm surprised like all these people like the ex-husband Tom and Agnes didn't like take the police office to court and stuff like that it's a crazy story yeah and even though it's solved I'm saying this is unsolved (laughs) this is definitely unsolved yeah um but geez i heard about this this story one of the wildest stories i've ever heard yeah i've i've heard i heard a story about 10 years ago Mm -hmm. and i I think back then i i read something on it it was like a blog on it and i'm like there's no one this stupid and then uh yeah i forgot about it i completely forgot about it and then there was a Mm -hmm. video that i came across like nine months ago, 10 months ago. Right. And it was about this. It was technically about three different cases that were solved, Hmm. but technically unsolved. And uh, this was one of them. I'm like, Oh, I remember that case. And I knew all about it. And I started writing this however many months ago. It wasn't long after we started this podcast It's like nine or 10 months ago. I was maybe we might've been two months in at that point. And I'm like, this would make a cool one. Right. But I knew there was a lot of research that I had to do. So yeah. I fill in little bits and pieces as I as I went. That's what I'm saying. I've mm-hmm. got five stories done. This was one of five. Yeah. And it's because I was doing like a little bit here and then I'd get bored with it and I'd go over here and do a little bit of this one. Then I'd go over here and do That's a little bit of this one. That's kind of the way to one. do it, I think. 
It is. Because otherwise, you're just yeah. fixated on one story. And it, yeah. The, at the, that this point, lets you take a little step back from it a little bit and, and get different thought process. I've rewrote yeah, things four or five exactly. times because I've came back like oh, yeah. two weeks later and I'm like, man, I don't know if I feel the same way about this now. I, I remember, like, I've had to do that a couple times as well. But I remember one big one was the Watchers one. And oh, we mentioned yeah. earlier in this how I was sort of in a panic because I came across new information that was just, it was for sure true, but no one had put it out. And I was like, I've right. got to include this. Like, this right. is almost like, you know, a breaking thing and no one else is doing it. So, correct. Like, we sometimes it's rough. You got to rewrite. Sometimes you just got to rewrite new information comes out or even your mind. Like uh, we've changed our thoughts and theories, just talking to each other on these podcasts. Oh, so, yeah. you yeah. know, it's kind of nice to do that. I'm glad that I don't do a lot of these the same exact week that we're doing. Them. Right. Yeah. Like a lot of times before I, we do a podcast, if I don't have one done, I've got one like 80% and I'm like, I'll just throw this other right. 20% on and keep moving. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of fun now. Cause I've got, three that's done oh, i guess i got six and i've got three more that i can just throw in and do the narrations oh, wow. on so i really got six we could do like the wheel of stories or something we could, spin that <laughs> we, could. And- we could <laughs> um i do want to make one at least one final statement and that mm-hmm. is these cops are my ability to believe that these cops are this stupid I find our silly Bigfoot story more believable than what these <laughs> cops think. Yeah, for sure. Like, I am gobsmacked that they would say this to people. You do see I'm wearing a big shirt uh, shirt today. I have, if I know. Then maybe that's what made me think of that. I don't, uh, I didn't know which one you was going to pick, Nick. <laughs> Got a lot of stuff going on there. Yeah, you just never know. Um, Never know. Oh, so one of these might be a Bigfoot story then. I don't know, Nick. I don't know. We we didn't have success with the first big Bigfoot story, so you know, you never know. Yeah. No. Well, we'll see. We'll see what if I choose C next time. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, hopefully y'all enjoyed but, this yeah. this episode. I guess I'm super curious what everyone thinks down in the comments down below. Do you think Cindy did it like the police officers did? Huh? Do you? No. No. You don't if you think so? That Cindy did it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna comment back to you. I'm gonna disgrace oh. you. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm getting Nick <laughs> mad. Don't get Nick mad now. Especially if you're an alien, I'll fight. He's you. got, he's got big words, <laughs> big sophisticated words that I never know the meaning to. <laughs> oh, I'll man. use them all. <laughs> what was my word this week? Oh, this was an easy one. You're just terrific. Terrific. That's right. Yeah, I went back to basics. Basic is good. We like good. (laughs) (laughs) Well, hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Uh, Just remember to hit thumbs up wherever you're listening to us. Leave us a rating no matter where you're listening to us. Mm -hmm. Also, I know I keep saying this, comment down below. It's that kind of engagement that helps people find our stuff. Also, tell Mm -hmm. your friends, stop being stingy with us. Yeah gosh that's right there's enough of us to go around okay yeah tell tell agnes your friend agnes and your yeah friend. Well, exactly his name now tony tony tom tom and agnes tell your friends toms and agnes and ozzy the ozzy the private investigator yep yep well until we see you on the next podcast goodbye goodbye
can't escape A black nylon stocking sealing her fate In the darkness, she fought to survive But the night it took her, she never felt alive Don't close your eyes Some more.